Hello, my name is Will Deer and I'm an investment specialist at Wilson Asset Management. I'm here with Matt Haupt, who is the lead portfolio manager of WAM Leaders. I want to ask you about um, the, the macro environment. It's an important input in your investment process and it feels quite confusing at the moment. We have high interest rates because of inflation, yet we also have tax cuts coming. How can we make sense of this? I mean, that's, that's a great question and a great place to start because normally what you have is uh, fiscal policy being counter-cyclical buffer. Um, and now what you're seeing is the fiscal policy uh, inflaming some inflation uh, while central banks are trying their hardest to slow things down. So um, that's what's made it really confusing this time around because you have that uh, pro-cyclical fiscal push rather than that counter-cyclical push. So in other words, it's, do you think that interest rates are, are going to stay high for for longer? Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, uh, you're looking at the underlying inflation at the moment. Services inflation has been very, very sticky. Um, goods have been in a period of disflation, but we're seeing commodity prices pick up. We're seeing uh, manufacturing activity pick up. So we think goods inflation is going to pick up as well. So what that means is we're probably going to have higher rates for longer. Um, I mean, the, the, the caveat here is around the labour market. Uh, labour market has been so tight uh, and with no real sh signs of weakness yet. That if the labour market were to break, what we just said around CPI will get forgotten. Central banks will respond to weaker labour markets. Okay, so it sounds like it's around the corner then. I mean, you're starting to see some signs, uh, early signs of labour weakness, mm -hmm. um, but it's really too early to call that. But um, that sticky inflation is here for longer, so mm -hmm. it's really going to be the labour market which will be the key factor which will determine monetary policy from here. And where do you expect that weakness to come? Are there certain industries and sectors that are more vulnerable? Well, obviously the retail sector is one that's under pressure at the moment. You're seeing retail sales in Australia really, really weak and uh, we got some of the Commonwealth Bank um, data out for April and it looked incredibly weak. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the US as well, you've had some retail sales weakness as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really uh, it's a consumer-led economy, developed economy, so it's really around those services and um, retail where we uh, expect the first signs to come through. At the start of the year, you were, you were very clear in saying that the market was expecting too many rate cuts, certainly relative to the bond market. Mm. And, and therefore you had quite a defensive portfolio. Have you been rewarded for being defensive, do you feel? Um, we have just recently, but the, the first part of the year was actually quite painful as the, the market ignored all the interest rate cuts coming out and we're, was happy to run with the more um, you know, speculative end of, of, of the market. But we have found that walking back now. Okay. Um, but again, we think the market always goes too far one way. Now we think they've probably taken out too many cuts right. In, you know, in Australia, they've got a hike in, a, in the forward curve now. So, again, we tend to gyrate between extremes and we think we're probably at an extreme of interest rate hikes coming back into the market. Um, but we are just got to see how it develops for the rest of the year. But um, we could be at a potential um, high point on the higher for longer as well. Can you just run through some of the changes, if any, that you've made to the portfolio and where you've got high conviction? Yeah, probably the biggest change we've introduced into the portfolio is really around energy and the, the, the shortage of energy. Uh, and particularly in Australia, you've got obviously big demands on electric vehicles, uh, computing power, AI, and, um, you know, data centres. They do need to be powered from something and in, we're seeing a bit of a shortage at the moment. So we are really looking for the Australian government to introduce a proper framework for uh, domestic energy. And we, and we think the beneficiaries here will be around gas being a, a, a viable and the most sensible choice of an, a transition energy policy. So we're hoping for more change around gas and that will benefit uh, you know, quite a few industries as well. Mm -hmm. um, and one we like is APA, which do a lot of the gas transmission. So we think they'll be an incredibly important hub uh, for energy transmission for Australia for the, you know, the next 10, 15 years as the, the use of gas increases um, to meet this energy demand. And can we just touch on China? I mean, China is a very important buyer of a lot of Australian um, uh, minerals and Australian goods. You've spoken about treasury wines. Do you still feel that, that, that that's going to be a, a positive tailwind for Australian equities? Yeah, I mean, China's incredibly tough because they're going through a really tough period at the moment. The policy has been turned on and turned off. We just got recent credit data, which was really, really weak. Um, but then on the next day, there's this issuance of long-term bonds, which we think is an incredibly important part of pulling China out of the mess they're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. The mess is really around 
the property sector, I mean, they did a massive overbuild and they're trying to, obviously the first point of uh, call was to slow it down. And now they've slowed it down to a point where house prices are starting to fall. They were okay with the volume change, but when prices change, that affects consumption. So now they're responding to that. So now they've got long-term bonds um, being issued. We think China will keep implementing policy to support house prices. And the recent policy change of buying stock, uh, existing stock and unfinished stock mm -hmm. and getting them completed is a positive. But the cycle for China is going to be pretty tough. Like the demographics aren't in their favour, but they're more longer term trends. So we think short term, the policy response from China is probably going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And there is some short term trades there. And in particular, I mean, things like iron ore, are, the, the pricing has been incredibly strong, despite everyone saying it's a very weak environment. And copper, obviously, with the more a global trade as well, but copper is obviously China are a big importer of that as well. So we think the short term is probably going to be okay. And can you just run through um, one stock example of, of a business that you like at the moment that you think is materially undervalued? The big one for us is um, Aurora. So Aurora, we've talked about before, and has been through a series of downgrades, unfortunately, um, which we thought the market were aware of. But for us, Aurora, the, these Aurora make um, cans and bottles for high-end liquor and, and wine. Mm -hmm. These businesses are quite boring in no normal circumstances. They trade at GDP+. plus. What you've seen is the massive change from the COVID period, the pandemic, impacting the way people stock the wine and the, the spirits and also the way they consume them. So we're just going through a normalisation period now and the market in these uncertain times, or well, these uncertain times are very short-term focused. The quality of this business is great and the long-term trends are great. So we think as we move through this, we, we call it the normalisation phase, this business is incredibly valuable and trading at a hugely discounted value to, the, to its peers. So again, we think the normalisation cycle as it comes through and, and is proven, the stock will re-rate. Thanks very much, Matt. And thanks for watching.